Hello friends, this video on Ray Optics Part 28 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 27 before going ahead with part 28. Now that we have studied refraction by spherical surfaces, it is time that we introduce lens. So we will now study the refraction of light by lens. So before studying the phenomenon of refraction by lens, it is good to know about a lens. What is a lens? So what is a lens? A lens is a transparent optical medium bounded by two surfaces, at least one being spherical. That means, till now we talked about the different spherical surfaces, concave spherical surface, convex surface, as well as we talked about plane surface, right? So lens is a combination of any two surface such that one surface should be a spherical surface. It is possible, it can be both convex, it can be both concave, it can be one convex, one plane, it can be one concave, one plane. So any combination is fine, but at least one surface should be spherical. So then the arrangement which we obtain is called a lens. There are two types of lenses simple lenses and compound lenses. When we talk of simple lens, it is what we just described, for example, biconvex, where both the surfaces are convex. Plano-convex, one surface is plane, the other surface is convex. Plano-concave, one surface is plane, the other surface is concave. Biconcave, where both the surfaces are concave. When I talk about compound lenses, I mean combination of simple lenses. That means if we have a combination where I have a biconvex lens as well as a planoconvex lens, then the entire arrangement is known as a compound lens. That means a lens with multiple simple lenses arranged together is known as a compound lens. Right? So now let us see uh, how does refraction of light take place through a lens. So let us quickly look at the terminologies related to a lens. However, things will be very similar to what we have discussed in case of spherical mirror because first we discussed about spherical mirror, then we talked about refraction at spherical surfaces, but there the terminologies remain the same. Pole, center of curvature, radius of curvature, focal length, principal focus, right? So here also more or less the terminologies will be the same, but still let us have a quick look so that you don't get confused when we go ahead. So the first thing on, or a, a new thing which comes into play here is optical center. What do we mean by optical center of a lens? Like how we talked about pole of a mirror. Similarly, in this case, we call the center of this lens as the optical center. This middle point is known as the optical center and it is generally denoted by a capital O, right? Next is the principal axis. The principal axis is the same as we discussed there. The axis which passes through the center, that means the axis the, or the line which passes through the optical center and also joins the center of curvature of both the spherical surfaces. That is the principal axis. So this is my principal axis. This line is the principal axis, right? The next is the center of curvature. Now what about the center of curvature? Since it has two spherical um, surfaces, therefore it has two center of curvature. For this spherical surface, it will have a center of curvature somewhere here. Similarly, for this spherical surface, it will have a center of curvature somewhere here. So we will call them at C1 and C2 and the corresponding radius of curvature will be known as R1 and R2 respectively. So this radius of curvature will be known as R1 and this radius of curvature will be known as R2. Right? So that is what I just now discussed about radius of curvature. The next one is the principal focus. See, now I am quickly discussing these terminologies because you already know what are these, right? So when I talk about principal focus, what is principal focus of a mirror? Do you remember? You must be, right? Because the principal focus is the point where the rays of light parallel to the mirror either meet after reflection or appear to meet after reflection. So that point is known as principal focus. 
in case of a lens what will happen because in case of a lens you have two spherical surfaces so you should also have two principal focus because for both the spherical surface you should have one principal focus each right like how we had radius of curvature radius of curvature also we had two r1 and r2 similarly in this case also you should have two principal focus so what are those two principal focus let us have a look so we will have a look at both convex lens as well as a concave lens now another point which i would like to clarify here is mostly when we talk about a convex lens it is going to be a biconvex lens whenever we i talk about a convex lens i always mean a biconvex lens that means which has both the surfaces convex when i talk about a concave lens i mean a biconcave lens whose both the surfaces are concave right you still remember the tip which i gave you at the beginning of the lesson concave cave means inside so this inside will be towards the object right so this is my convex lens and this is my concave lens so i will look at the principal focus for both convex as well as concave lens so let us first talk about a convex lens so when i talk about a convex lens it ha it has got two focus two for side the first focus is often denoted as f1 and the second focus is denoted as f2 so what is first focus and what is second focus so let us talk about the first focus first let us suppose this is my convex lens okay this is the principal axis let us suppose there is some real object because of which some rays of light there is some point from where when the rays of light originate after passing through the lens they move parallel to the principal axis so such a point is known as the first focal point and this length is known as the first focal length right when it so happens that from a point when there exists a point from where the rays of light originating after passing through the lens goes parallel to the principal axis we say that this point is the first focal point whereas when we say that a ray of light parallel to the principal axis when it falls on the lens after refraction meets at a single point or converges at a single point then this point is known as f2 that is the second focal point and this focal length this distance of f from the optical center o is known as the second focal length so in this case what happens the rays really meet at this point now often now if the refractive index on both sides of the lens are same that means the refractive index on this side is mu and the refractive index on this side is also mu if the refractive index on both sides of the lens are same in that case the first focal length is equal to the second focal length that means if this, let us suppose this is mu1 and this is mu2 if mu1 is equal to mu2 then f1 is also equal to f2 right so which is in which is true in most of the cases let us suppose if you have placed a lens this side is air this side is also air that means the refractive index on both sides of the lens are same so in that case both these focal lengths are same in that case f1 is equal to f2 now whenever we generally talk about the focal length of a lens we generally refer this point f2 focal length of a lens focal length generally please remember this focal length generally refers to f2 does it matter whether f1 and f2 are the same or not but whenever we generally talk about focal length of a convex lens we generally mean the second focus that is the second focal length that is f2 similarly in case of a concave lens 
again we have to focus f1 and f2 first focus second focus and correspondingly first focal length and second focal length so in this case what happens let us let us talk about the first focal length first So here what, hap what is happening when rays of light parallel to the principal axis falls on this lens they get diverged. However if we trace them back they appear to meet at this point. So this point is known as F2 that is the second focal point. Very similar to this I mean these two the second focal uh, point thing is very much uh, similar to what we have studied in case of principal focus of mirror right and this distance is known as the second focal length for a concave lens. Now what about the first focal length? First focal length comes into picture when we are assuming that some ray of light falls on this lens somewhat like this and after passing through the lens they move parallel to the principal axis. So after passing through the lens they go parallel to the principal axis. So then we say that the point where these rays appear to meet or the point from which these rays appear to originate is known as the first focal point. So basically this first focal point is just the reverse. I mean it is just the vice versa of the second focal point. I mean concept wise. So this is F1 and this distance is the first focal length. I think you don't really need to get confused with this first focal length and second focal length. I just told you because these are certain true facts. Every lens will have two focal points F1 and F2. Whenever we talk about focal length of a lens we generally mean the second focus point because that is the point where because a convex lens is again a converging lens. Similarly, a concave lens is a diverging lens. So, a in, in, a concave, in a convex lens, the rays of light converge at a point, that point is the focus. Similarly, in a concave lens, the rays diverge and the point where they appear to converge, that is again the focus. So, just remember the simple funda. You, I mean, you can... You understand this for your knowledge that there is one focus, first focus, there is second focus. But whenever we generally talk about the focal length of a lens, we generally talk about this second focal point. Right? Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.